Merci. Euh, à présent, euh, on a abordé le, le problème de la difficulté de, de réguler euh, les supports quand ils sont ouverts, comme Wikipédia. Il euh, y a un, un organisme qui euh, est dédié à cette action, euh, une association qui joue un rôle essentiel dans l'open source, c'est euh, l'OSI, Open Source Initiative, euh, qui est présente aujourd'hui, euh, car elle soutient le développement de la communauté dans le monde, en assurant le respect des règles fondamentales de l'open source. Et euh, j'ai le plaisir aujourd'hui d'accueillir euh, Tony Wasserman, qui nous vient des états unis euh, qui est le directeur euh, de l'OSI, euh, pardon, membre du board, et qui vient nous faire une annonce euh, en prime time euh, concernant le changement de gouvernance de l'OSI. Euh, donc bienvenue, Tony. mais c'est un peu difficile pour moi. Euh, je le regrette, mais euh, je vais parler en anglais. Um, the, um, uh, the Open Source Initiative has been uh, in existence since uh, 1998. It was formed to uh, create the um, basis and the foundation for doing three things. First, for approving open source licenses. Uh, the second was to uh, help educate people about open source. And the third was to try to have some influence on public policy. Uh, and these are all important goals, and I think that the OSI has done quite a good job on, on these things. Of course, uh, we know that there are many open source licenses that have been approved, uh, and most of the, the ones that are widely used, the GPL, the Mozilla license, Apache, MIT, Berkeley, from the uh, most restrictive to the most permissive, Uh, there's a very broad selection of licenses that someone creating open source software can use. Uh, from an educational perspective, uh, there's a need to educate people about open source, and this education comes in many different ways, from uh, university classes to professional training to um, just experiential uh, kinds of activities. Uh, uh, it's particularly important in developing countries where people uh, are not using and don't have the money to use proprietary software. Open source software is tremendously successful there, but there's a need for education. Uh, many of the members in the OSI have been uh, involved with that. Uh, around um, public policy, uh, there have been some issues uh, even in the past year about patents and packages of patents that are being sold where uh, they have a, a negative impact on the acceptance and use of open source software. Uh, the OSI has been active and commenting to uh, the United States government, to the German government, and having, uh, fortunately, a, a very uh, positive impact on uh, the decisions that these government organizations have taken. So. Um, What's happening now is that the OSI is really going to uh, undergo some change. That is, uh, f from the beginning, the OSI was led by a, a board, which now has 10 people. And for many years, the membership of the board was fixed. Uh, and, and the people who started the OSI did really an excellent job, particularly around licenses and license approval. But, uh, a few years ago, the uh, first of the changes was to put term limits on board membership. And what this meant was that we had uh, some new people coming onto the board, including myself. Uh, this is just my second year on, on the board. And of course, as new members, uh, we have some uh, ideas about where the open source initiative should go in the future. And so we are beginning to, to take those activities. Uh, one of the key uh, things for us is to open up the uh, open source initiative to more participation. 
So we're supposed to be open. We're supposed to be a community. And uh, it has been difficult for people who are not on the board to really find a way to participate. Uh, so uh, what we did uh, was to try to improve the governance. Do I? Oh, I have the slides. Thank you for putting them up there. Ha, huh. excellent. Yeah, where am I supposed to? There we go. Look at that. Um, now, hey, all right. Uh, I, I sent these in after midnight last night, so the conference management gets extra points for um, getting these into the into the system. Terrific. So, uh, to come back to my point, we have uh, this plan change in government where we're going to expand the participation and really try to become more of a community. The first step is to create an affiliate structure. And in this affiliate structure, we're going to go after the other open source foundations to, to join and to have a role. And eventually, we'll have a place for corporate advisory boards and individual participation. Uh, and, and these people will help us to uh, populate the new uh, candidates for the board. And we'll change the OSI bylaws. But I want to announce, to make it important, that we're going to uh, start adding these, affili these affiliates very shortly. So for those of you who belong to organizations that are participating in open source, please consider having your organizations join the OSI. As an individual, we're also uh, expanding uh, membership in our working groups on education, on public policy, and license approval. Uh, so if you, if you have the time and the energy to participate, please let us know. You can contact um, Simon Phipps at webmink.opensource.org or me here, we're both here, uh, and then let us know what we should be doing uh, about governments, governance to um, improve things. And of course, the OSI is a nonprofit community-supported organization. So if you and your organ or your organization are in a position to help support us as we go forward, we would be most grateful for that. Thank you very much for your attention and your time. Au revoir, merci. Thank you, Tony.